Hey, what's going on out there? I'm Sean Devine. Today I've got a new tutorial for you all and I'm going to be talking about the optimal settings in terms of sample rate, bit depth, uh, mono versus stereo recordings, especially with vocals. I've had a lot of questions about that. I'm going to show you uh, the difference between mono and dual mono uh, recordings. And I really just want to get y'all set up to get the best results and also tell you why I use the settings I use why I find them to be the best in terms of workflow and also uh, getting the best quality possible. So let's go ahead and just cover something I'm getting a ton of questions on on the channel, and that is uh, mono uh, vocals versus dual mono vocals. So as you're going to see here in this uh, mix I'm working on today, this verse is recorded, all the vocals for that matter, are recorded in mono. So we've just got this one single channel <clears throat> excuse me and this is what i would normally record uh, my vocals are just mono right now the confusion has come some of the sessions that i've shown you all from uh, some of my clients use dual mono recordings for the vocals so if we go up here to some of the instrumentation you're going to see for instance here on this bass that we have a true stereo recording on this bass right which means that we have a individual left and right channel, okay, and they're fundamentally different on your left and right in terms of what the signal is. So that's true stereo. Now, if we go up to, let's say our kick drum. Now, if we zoom in here, this kick drum, it has two separate audio channels. It has a left and a right channel, but it's not stereo because this information is the same for the left and right channel. When that is the case, that means it's dual mono. So that means you've got a mono signal on the left and the right side. So it's fundamentally, uh, it's mono, okay? That's not true stereo. So when you've seen the uh, vocal tracks and they look like that track I just showed you, it means that they were recorded as dual mono. Now, why would you have a dual mono uh, vocal recording? The reason is nothing to do with quality or you know one is better than the other it's simply the way that it's recorded and physically wired um, into your uh, audio interface or mixer and then recorded into the, into the daw now why this happens is usually because in the wiring for your audio interface and your mic your preamp whatever you're using uh, a pair of cables so for instance some people might be uh, routing the outputs with rca cables so there's two of those right you've got a uh, two two uh, signals coming out of there, a left and a right signal. So even though the vocal is mono, you still have to send out those two uh, through either, again, the RCA or a TRS, or excuse me, TS cable, and then you're coming back into the DAW and you need to record those channels respectively. So that's how you end up with a dual mono track. Fundamentally the same as mono. Uh, you don't need to worry about trying to have stereo vocal recordings Again, unless you had an omnidirectional microphone and you were recording that, which very rarely are you going, you're going to be doing that, especially in music. Um, and then, you know, you don't need to be picking up stereo uh, width on your vocal recordings for this type of, of thing. So don't worry about that. Next, let's talk about sample rates. So a lot of conversation online in the studio about what's the best sample rate to record at. What's the best sample rate to export your sessions at? Uh, I'm going to talk about what I use and why. Uh, so first, if we want to know where our sample rate is, we're just going to go up here to Project Settings. We'll go to Audio. And that's going to show us the sample rate for this particular session. Now, you'll see that I'm at 44.1. Okay, there are higher sample rates. A lot of people prefer to be at 48K, 96K or even 192K. Now, I personally, I've been doing this for a long time professionally, and I don't notice a significant difference between 44.1 and any of these other higher uh, sample rates. Other people argue they can, that's fine. Uh, for what I do, 44.1 does the job. There's a reason why it's been the audio standard for so long, and I'll even put an article up from uh, Applied Acoustic Systems, who they're really, really uh, bright in this field. And uh, the CEO, or maybe it's the FTO, CTO, 
one of the head guys uh, wrote an article about sample rates, and he talks a lot about why 44.1 is still, you know, a, it's a good sample rate to be at. Uh, so I stay there. The other reason why I'm at 44.1 is because I'm working on a lot of different sessions all the time. So if I had, you know, this session at 44.1, got another one at 48K, one at 96, I'm going back and forth. It can be very confusing to your, uh, your uh, Mac environment or your PC environment, your OS and your audio interface to switch back and forth between sample rates. Um, it has to kind of reset itself and reset the sample rate. And so it's just a real inconvenience. And also when you're pulling in and out files, if the files are at 44.1 and you're trying to pull them into a 96K session or vice versa, it can just get really convoluted. Most of the mixing sessions I get are in 44.1, so it's not going to do me any good to have a 44.1 uh, sample rate file pulled into a higher sample rate. Um, just not really something that uh, is useful to me. So that's why I am at 44.1. Now I'm going to show you my uh, personal recording settings in Logic. So if we go to our preferences and we go to audio and we go to recording. So this is what I personally record at in my setup or, you know, if I'm working as an engineer in another studio in Logic, uh, this is what I'm using. I'm in, in Wave, obviously, and I do record at 24-bit. So again, it's the same kind of thing with the sample rate. Some people are going to say you can't tell the difference. I personally have just come to prefer uh, recording at 24-bit. And then I can always bounce down to 16-bit later, but it doesn't pose the same problems that uh, working at the other sample rates does for me. So I can at least just get the highest quality recordings possible and not have all those inconveniences of switching back and forth um, in terms of sample rate. It's, it's really easy to work with 24-bit uh, recordings. It's actually not any different um, in terms of you know, just using those files within the DAW. So I always do that. And then let's move on to um, exporting. So again, a lot of questions about, you know, what are the best settings for export? Um, here, you know, if we're going to be doing a wave, which is typically what you're going to deliver masters for, you're going to be sending it to distribution. It's really the final highest quality version of the audio. Um, so for me, I'm going to put my resolution at 24-bit, uh, especially when I'm delivering mixes, if I've uh, recorded at 24-bit, or if I see that the recordings are at 24-bit, I'm going to go there. If they're 16-bit, then you might as well just leave it. Um, with all these things, just think of it in terms of, let's say you had an MP3. You're not going to export the MP3 as a wave and expect it to be higher quality. So whatever the source is, it, it can't, you know, we can do what's called oversampling. So we could, you know, if it was at 44.1, then we could export at 96K. Um, it's not going to really change the quality of the sound. So I just stick with whatever the source material is. So in this case, you know, 16 or 24 bit, but we're going to be at 44.1 for the exports. Most times these days, your distribution companies and iTunes and all these other uh, places, they're going to want 44.1 anyway. Um, I've actually had a lot of clients after I've delivered 48K tell me they need the 44.1 for that purpose. So um, in terms of audio and music, 44.1 is still a good uh, sample rate. Now, some other settings in Logic that I want to point out. Uh, normalize, you want to make sure this is off. I think by default, it will normalize if uh, it has an overload or if it has any clipping going on. That's not good. You don't want that. Uh, so I always turn normalize off. I don't want it normalizing anything uh, that I'm exporting. Um, in very rare cases, if you're doing some other types of sessions, you may want to normalize your files, but uh, for this, you wouldn't. Now on MP3, the bit rates for the MP3 is very important. Uh, this is something that most of you are probably familiar with, but as you get down below like 128K on an MP3, the quality really suffers and it's very easy to notice uh, missing frequencies and just lower quality in general. Uh, so I'm always bouncing my MP3s, especially when I'm delivering them, you know, as finals in 320K. 
Um, and then you can write ID3 settings if you want. Um, I always click this use best encoding. I don't filter frequencies below 10 hertz. So finally, let me show you uh, the settings for uh, my preamp. And uh, again, you know, obviously a lot of you are going to have very different preamps than I do. This is just to give you an idea of where you should be um, in terms of general levels for your recordings. You're going to see right here, this is the meter for my mic, and you'll see I'm, I'm well below zero. However, I'm getting a nice healthy signal. And then I'm, I'm also using a little bit of dynamics processing going in, but that's just the reason uh, being that uh, I'm recording the screen capture for y'all. So the way that this is all routed, um, I do the dynamics processing going in. Um, however, you're probably not going to want to do any processing going in unless you're working with an engineer or you're in a studio where they have you know great outboard gear, great compressors, and they really know what they're doing and are dialing in sounds that are just going to give your recordings a flavor that's then going to be able to enhance by the mixing engineer. So a lot of questions about, you know, should I record effects going in? Uh, nine times out of ten, especially for you all recording at home, who are not going to be doing your own mixing, you're going to be sending it to someone like myself. I always recommend to record as dry as possible, get a nice clean signal. Now with the preamp, there is usually a sweet spot for all preamps and it's always a little different um, if you notice on mine uh, i've got the gain pretty high on this microphone because it requires a lot of gain but you'll see that the signal is still uh, healthy not peaking i'm not distorting uh, the key with the uh, vocal recordings is you don't want to get too hot you don't want to be distorting the uh, vocal tracking so i've talked about clipping in the DAW, that's very different than clipping or distorting in your actual recording. You don't want to do that. You want to keep it nice and healthy. Try to find the sweet spot. Find out you know where it sounds the warmest and the healthiest, and then just keep it below that distortion level. And then again, just go in as dry as possible, and that way you're going to have a lot more flexible signal when you send it to someone like myself. All right, y'all, so we've covered sample rates, bit depths, monitor recordings, preamp settings, exporting settings, all these things that are going to uh, help you get the best workflow and also the highest quality uh, recordings or the highest quality that you will need. Uh, again, if you wanna try some higher sample rates, you wanna test out uh, 16 bit versus 24 bit recording, I definitely encourage you to do so. I just wanna show you all that there's no magic behind uh, the quality that I'm getting. I'm actually using the lowest sample rate uh, that's available in most of the DAWs, which is 44.1, but it's certainly uh, very, very capable of producing high quality results, as you've heard. So don't get too caught up in this numbers game. Everybody tries to turn anything into a numbers game, and uh, it's the same way in DAW recording, but I'm just here to tell you that 44.1, 24-bit, it will get you uh, very good recordings. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. If you learned anything in this video, please like and subscribe, and we'll talk to you soon.